Listen, we've tried to have this discussion about the Chappelle A46 thing. It's been very difficult. Um, high stakes because you don't want to criticize it because it seems like you're criticizing the thing that he's supporting, right? So it's very difficult to detach this from, detach the art from the point that he's making because there's not a lot of art in it, right? It's not, if it was stand up, you could criticize the stand up jokes, but it's not stand up. He's just talking about what's happening um, right now in our country and he's saying things um, and speaking eloquently on it. So you don't want to criticize it because it seems like you're criticizing his point of view instead of criticizing the way that he's delivering it. Right. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. That, that's why I think it's so harsh. Right. So I think the reaction a lot of people have, and I think we agreed to look at this through two lens lenses. One is our reaction to the piece. And the other is our reaction to people's reaction to the piece. Yes. Right. And, um, it's really difficult because we're, we're jaded in a way because our expectation from Chappelle is so fucking great. Nothing so less than mastery is acceptable. Is acceptable. If you are Nothing. not uh, putting every point forward masterfully, yeah. it's not Chappelle. And also keep this in mind for people who are listening. A lot of you guys haven't been in a room and watched Dave Chappelle for six hours straight like Akash and yeah, I have and yeah. Alex has and I think in LA you yeah. did it or it was it yeah, it was yeah, in LA, I mean, right? And Mark, I don't know if you ever saw a long set story. from Chappelle, but like It's amazing. It is unreal his ability to like control a room and honestly control expectation and patience. Hmm. You're not bored. He could talk for six hours and not bored. And Akash, you were kind of bringing this up with the special, or not the special, with this piece, with this talk that he gave, 846, yeah. which was... I thought it was good overall, but I was bored in the middle. There were and boring parts. And that's kind of... And some of his points, I'm like, oh, that's that's the, we, that's the smoke you gave Candace Owens. The Candace Owens smoke was in, like, your pussy stinks, undeniably weak. And again, it's so weird to even sit here and like criticize it. I almost feel like the only reason we're talking about this is because it was exalted by the people so, so much. So that's, I think, the issue... And I think some of us had a bigger issue with it than others. Yeah, me. Comics, yeah, <laughs> comics are, and I. This is hypocritical because comics Ooh. are like, this is what comedy should be. This is what it, it is. I thought it was a good special. It is not a good comedy special. It's not comedy. It was a good talk. And I will let Dave Chappelle do this because I respect his brilliance mm -hmm. and he has the credibility built up. If you're some fucking loser at an open mic. This is not what comedy is. In the same way, we do not let Hannah Gatsby slide and say that's comedy. That's not right. comedy, neither is this. Right, exactly. The criticism of a Hannah Gatsby would be like, the people who agree with everything she's saying love her, and yeah. the people who don't agree are going to go, well, it's not funny enough for me to not agree. Right. And the, the amazing thing about comedy is that when a joke is funny, you cannot agree with the yes. point of view, but it's so funny, you're willing to digest it. Yeah. Yes. You know, it's like... It's like when you make a like a horrible food out of like sugar. Yeah. You know how like sometimes people make a like a boot out of cake? Right, right. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? And it's like, oh fuck, I'm eating a boot, but I'm not. Like that's what comedy can be. It can be this like sugary encasing for this thing that you would never eat in your life. Right. And um I think maybe I was waiting for him to say stuff in a way that was so unimpeachable that people who completely d disagreed with the support of Black Lives Matter and the support of this movement to like end police brutality and like give black people the equality they're supposed to have. I was waiting for him to put forward these masterful arguments and <clears throat> I didn't see it based on a Chappelle level of mastery. Like I like the Eric Dorner comparison. I thought that was really clever, this idea of like, and that is like a glimpse of what Chappelle does. He's Chris like, Dorner? or sorry, it's Eric Goner, Chris Dorner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's like, that's what he'll do. He'll take something and he'll go and he'll make you empathize. Let's say you're super supportive of the police. He'll take that empathy you have for the police and he'll find a way to position that for yeah. this person <clears throat> that might be your enemy. Right. Mm. And he did that. And granted, this is his first time on stage in months. I think that if he had another three weeks with that joke or that idea, that's a hilarious bit. I don't even think rust is ever an issue for him i think Fair. he is well put it there's a difference between rust and time working out a joke so i think he, he didn't even have the time he i think he felt like he needs to say something now and he's had three weeks to come up with bits about this right right but uh 
So I wouldn't say 87 days. I'd say he has to put out content in, what, 21 days? Regardless, regardless. Like, if that's your first time on stage, yeah. just for people who don't understand oh, the how comedy works. Yeah. Exactly. So it's like, you start with an idea on stage, and it's not that funny, but the idea is there. Yeah. And then it's just like a piece of wood. You slowly carve it and shape it into a sculpture. Right. And I feel like we had, like, the, the wood right there. Right? Yeah. And again, it's like... See, and that's a thought that I had that just came to me now yeah you two are looking at it from uh comics pov yeah like, i was just i'm just like a fan right and so i thought it was a little bit better than what you guys think of course i don't think it's Chappelle's best piece but i also don't look at this as a comedy special i just look at this like a public speaking event yeah and as he talks on the issues going on and then he just throws a little funny just to keep you you know engaged with it yeah I, so I, I agree looking with you. at it from that point of view i thought it was okay like i didn't hear anything new that i didn't already know i did think it was good because he's such a, a great orator it's like i was glued i oh, did yeah, think I it was good and glued. to and at, to your point at the at the in the middle i was like yo this is he's losing me and at the end and it i've said this to y'all multiple yep. times now but this really have hit me when he s talked about you know uh george floyd calling for his mom and then his dad he's only heard that one other time his dad calling for his grandma and at the end he says my dad's grandma was a slave and like the recency of that fucking stuck yeah. with me yeah, yeah, yeah and again we all no one knows how long ago slavery was we all kind of put it 400 years ago 300 years ago 200 years ago that i was like holy fuck yeah. slavery was mad recent like yeah. slavery not let's separate water fountains i'm talking about no water in the fields mm -hmm. mad recent so yeah. like that affected me in a way that i was like fuck and that made it worth it for me mm -hmm. so i think i'm a little less harsh because i hadn't maybe i just don't know history at all i don't really care to but that put it in a way to me that i was like fuck if, it was, if it was released by ted if it was a ted talk yeah. would your reaction be different no mm. it'd be the same yeah, because what I what I missed from it were prolific arguments. And I'm used to him making such prolific arguments within his stand up for me. And Akash and I might debate this word, yeah. but like when I see the arguments in his stand up, I'm like, that logic is so unimpeachable that I could present that to the most right wing person or the most left wing per person. And both of them will sit there and go, nah, he got a point. And I what I saw here was raw emotion. And sometimes you need to speak off emotion. I'm not saying there isn't a place for that. But what Chappelle did so beautifully, I think, in his career was like took that emotion and then carved it into these like beautiful arguments that did a lot of the intellectual heavy lifting for the people that listened and watched them. And then you could take those arguments and then you could use them when you're debating your uncle who might not really be empathetic to this struggle. And I just didn't really see that here. So if it was a TED Talk, I'd be like, there wasn't enough Ted. What, what I saw was, you know what I'm saying? There wasn't enough Ted in it. So it was just a talk that I thought wasn't up to the standard of brilliance that Chappelle has. And if those arguments were made funny, I'd be like, all right, it was cool. I laughed. It was really, but then he didn't really put the effort to make them funny. So it was missing brilliance and missing funny. And I think I went into it. I think I went into it because I saw the way people reacting to it. You got to see this is the greatest thing ever. This will never be not spoken about. And it's no different than when you go into a movie and people say it's amazing. And you're like, wait a minute, wasn't it the greatest movie I've ever seen? And now it seems like a letdown because my expectations were so high. Yo, so two things. That's a big difference, actually, because my the first things comics sent me, like Robbie Slovic, who I trust, was like, it's not comedy. Still watch it. Yep. And then... My girl had time to watch it before me, and she was like, she said the Hannah Gatsby thing. She was like, all right, he, don't shit on Hannah Gatsby and like this. And I was like, okay, so it's not going to be funny, and I know this So you went in. in with the right expectation. So I, I went in knowing, okay, it's not going to be funny. And in the middle, I was like, yo, she might be right. I might have to give Hannah, I might have to give Chappelle that Hannah Gatsby smoke. Yeah. And then at the end, maybe I was so relieved there was something I could grab onto that I was like, oh, right. thank God. Okay, That's I'm going to do that. But two theories about why it wasn't carved out as beautifully as we would have hoped. Yeah. Mine is time. He just didn't have time yep. and he felt like I have to say something. The country's at a fucking breaking point. Yeah. Two is Alex's theory that he presented earlier and say that on the mic. Yep. What the editing and all that, like what he has in store. Oh, yeah. I really feel that he had a performance, a full stand up performance. And this was like the end of the performance where it's like he just talks to the crowd. So it's like he wasn't trying to deliver jokes. And something that stuck with me when Al said that yeah. is, you know, like 
very early into the Chappelle set, he goes, are y'all bored yet? Mm. Uh, we've all seen Chappelle. When I see him doing six hours, he doesn't ask that shit for four hours. Yeah. Are y'all bored yet? So for him to say that eight minutes in or whatever, I remember at the time being like, that's mad early for Chappelle to ask if we're bored. Mm. Yep. So that could be, he could have done a long set, knocked out some shit, and then at the end just been emotional, and that's all he put out. Yeah. I think that Chappelle is moving towards, and I've said this before, just speaking and like being like almost like a teacher and like he has such prolific thoughts that they he can just talk to us about these things and we see in the past and i've seen him do it live etc i just didn't see that prolific things being said about this i and and look i could be wrong but i ask you guys that are you know listen to the podcast like when you saw the arguments that he laid out or what he was talking about like was there something that you were like yo i didn't look at it that way outside of the of the Dorner, what's Chris Dorner? Thing? Chris Dorner. Outside of the Chris Dorner thing, I, I, I don't. Was there something that you were like again for me? The end. The, and the end, the end, the, th- the the thing, the end. I get why that resonated with you because I remember once my dad was telling me. My dad did this uh, documentary on this on this guy. I forget uh, I forget his name, um, but he told a story about. He was this uh, jazz music- musician, and he told a story about his mom. I believe his mom, the jazz musician, super old. Yeah, I believe his mom seeing Abraham Lincoln walk through D.C. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. After slavery was abolished, and she one of the last people to see this dude. Now I wonder if it was his grandma, but I believe it was his mom. This guy has already passed. But when he said that to me, yeah, I got that feeling you got, which was, oh shit, yeah, this is not that long ago, mm-hmm. yeah. So, so maybe the reason that didn't affect me in the same way is because I've heard that story. But Chappelle putting it in that way, I could see how it really affected right. you, and it can really put in context to other people who are not sympathetic to the black plight in America. They're like, yeah, why don't you get over that shit? It's like it's new still, right? Okay, I see. I see that. I see that there. I don't know. Positives. What are the positives? Chappelle said something. That's a positive. Yeah. I thought the Candace Owens point was actually pretty decent. Like, obviously, the roast of her was like, was trash. But like, when he, like, Candace Owens raises this point where she goes, black people are the only group of people that sort of uh, like exalt or uphold the, or make martyrs of the worst of our uh, the worst of our group yeah and that we constantly like praise and make t-shirts out of these people that are criminals and you know yeah. people and like why do we choose these people and then Chappelle says we don't choose them you choose them the cops choose them yeah the cops that was a them. great point yeah. and I probably forgot about it because at that point I was like this yeah. is yeah, yeah the I Candace know. Owens roast was trash yeah I would almost rather her, him not roast her because it I think clouded that point right and then his, <laughs> only, his only roast of her was like she's so articulate and then the stinky pussy thing. Right, right. But like, he was like complimenting her at the same time. I was like, I, I felt conflicted as to what he was trying to say. Yo, I'm not going to lie. Candace handled that shit beautifully. Bro. She's, she's smart, dude. She's not dumb. She that not, was what Chappelle said. She's not dumb. If y'all didn't see the way she handled it, she didn't like criticize. She didn't push back. She was just like, uh, she's like, to every Democrat uh, tweeting me the clip of Dave Chappelle and son insulting me. I'm not a, left, a leftist. I have a sense of humor. I think comics <laughs> should make fun of people. Dave Chappelle is one of the greatest comedians of all time. And I made it to one of his specials. That's power. And then she says some other shit like, uh, I hope that, you know, we meet sometime. You can say that stuff to my face. And then like winky face. Smile. Yeah. But like she chose to take the road of yeah. I'm going to laugh at this, allow it to happen instead of being all butthurt. Yeah. And then she actually looks good. Yeah. Coming out of it. Mm-hmm. Whereas like if he leaned into that idea and then leaned into the character that she is and how the right, the pe- or p- people on the right hold her up as a token so that all of her their arguments can be filtered through her yeah. so that. They can't be called racist for having. The I white guarantee you, if you ask him about having. Candace Owens, he has a great opinion on Candace Owens. So why? Like, let's hear that. I know. And I don't, that, I agree with, I agree with that. This is like, what is, and that point is a great point. We don't want these people to be our heroes. You do this. That's a great point. You think he's saving it for a stand-up bit? You Maybe. think he's got like a bit? Yeah, probably. Because we do that. We're on the road. We release some of the stuff, you yeah. know, but we're like, nah, don't keep that. That's going to be a bit. We're going to put that in the next special. And maybe he has some real Candace smoke, but he's like, ooh, no, let me carve that out. That's going to be the one that like, you know, puts the machete. And this could be or, proof. Yeah. I also thought this could be proof, as I was watching it, of what you've said, which is I think he's transitioning out of stand-up. Yes. And I think, 
I don't think he is Malcolm or Martin, but I think when people say like, who's our guy, he has the potential to be one of those guys Yeah. in that it might not be the same level, but that's, that's who we got right now. And I think this is him maybe getting comfortable with stepping out of, cause there's, cause humor for all of us is mm. a defense mechanism. Yes. So maybe for him, it was, let me get my points across through humor. And this is him kind of shedding away the defense mechanism of humor. And it's, let me just put forth my emotion. Yo. And we'll carve it out from there. I like I like that slow transition. We've seen him do it, right? He did it at the uh, I think Mark Twain. Yeah. Uh, he, he did it. Um, he's been doing it a bunch of different places, just kind of like talking, but also talking funny. And I've always said it's like I love Chappelle to just be a teacher. Yeah. I don't think that this was what he said was at the level of his specials. At even his specials, like I would rather listen to his arguments from his specials without the punchlines. Like, I think some of the arguments in the specials without the punchlines were so prolific. Even when he did the bird revelation, there weren't a lot of punchlines nah, in it. she was incredible. But it was masterful. If you compare this to that, there's a different level of mastery going on. We can acknowledge that, right? Yo, I'm going to yes. say something yeah. that's going to sound blasphemous. Go. But Sticks and Stones wasn't up to the level of his other stuff. So is it just... Oh. Come on, son. We got to present all of the arguments. That's To me, that's the goat. But Sticks and Stones, I remember kind of thinking the same thing. Like, these aren't ideas I haven't heard before. And I expected more nah. comedy special from Sticks and Stones. This, I was thinking like... Yeah, you weren't a fan of Sticks and Stones. I wasn't a massive fan. It was yeah. good. And I'm glad Chappelle's the guy carrying that torch forward. It helps yeah. all of us. Yeah. But I remember thinking, we've said this stuff. And Chappelle, I, I'm not a genius by any stretch. If I have the same point as Chappelle, I don't look at me smarter. I look at Chappelle like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what the hell's going on here? I, don't know, I think Sticks, Sticks and Stones, it was a bar when he said like, he can't say maggot, but he could say nigga. That on uh on, yeah, on, on yeah, the show. network execs yeah. yeah 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 and she was like oh well you can't say maggot because you're not gay he's like well i'm also not a nigga yeah but a gay person could say the f word and if she said the same argument he'd be like yeah well i'm not an f word see what i'm saying like yeah. just it, the, the, uh, the thing with that joke is the argument on the surface seemed great because like it satisfied our emotions yeah. but if you actually kind of like peel it apart you're what, like, so is the gay person an F word? Yeah. Because he's not, but he can still say She's basically saying like, you have the license to use the bad words that are attributed to you, but you don't have the license to use the bad words that are attributed to people who aren't you. Hmm. But he phrased it as if she was calling him the N word. Yeah. So she got, he kind of like sacrificed her yeah. for the joke. And I thought the joke was really good. And this is one of the beautiful things about stand up. It doesn't have to be the court of law. No. That can be like a really fun fucking bit yeah. and a great point. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys, for not. Yeah, we really hours. ruined yeah, that. You, <laughs> but, <laughs> you ruined but, that for me. I and, thought and that maybe, shit was and, like, and, I, and I maybe we ruined it. it for other people, but maybe yeah. that's also like the, the way that that's the standard we hold up to Chappelle to. For me, yeah. Like, I, I just think he's the greatest living comedian, and I still man. think, like, yeah, I think, and I love Patrice, but yeah. just the Chappelle, I just think, goat. Like, I just do. And yeah. maybe Patrice is right underneath him or whatever, but like, I don't, that doesn't take away from his greatness. It just, that's what I saw. Mm -hmm. You're still great. Yeah. And the thing that was special about this, if you want to call it a special, I'm not calling it comedy. If you want to call it a special, the thing that was special was he's dave Chappelle showing us a side of himself he's never shown us right and the timing and he spoke out and that's kind of what made it special and that's that's it right and i don't mean that like fuck this is a piece of trash but like if we're gonna call it a special that's why it's special and that's how i can compartmentalize it because it wasn't special in its content necessarily right throughout it wasn't special in the fact that it was hilarious why do you think people felt the need especially like our comics friends to like talk about how prolific it was he's our trump man He's our Trump. Oh, like no matter what he does, it's good. Yeah, but he's like, he's much, and I'm not saying he is Trump at all. I think he's the greatest. But a Trump supporter, anything Trump does is brilliant. Chappelle did earn that with us, but anything he does is brilliant. Ah, so mm. we're looking at him through like, what and is he it, earned it. That's different than Trump. Trump glasses or yeah. something like that. Rose colored glasses. Yeah, yeah. And he yeah. deserves it. He's earned that. Yeah, yeah. I really yeah. believe like if a guy overrates Chappelle, Cool, just don't think you got the same license. That's my only advice to comics. If you think this is what comedy should be, this is what Dave Chappelle is allowed to be. You are not. Yeah, you're going to be asking if people are bored a lot too. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to they're gonna have been left. Bro, it's good. where are you guys going? <laughs> 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 